friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. In case you're new here, my name's Jennifer. Today we're going to be talking all about vertical gardening. Now vertical gardening is one of my favorite gardening strategies to use. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why it's a great idea. Then we're going to talk about some of the, the ways to do it, some of my favorite hows of vertical gardening, I guess. And we're also going to talk about what plants are great candidates to use in vertical gardening. behind me here these are my fall tomatoes and you can see I have them up on a stake we'll get to staking and trellising and all that kind of stuff in the second part of this video but first of all I want to talk to you about why I have my tomato plants staked up like this now tomatoes if you've ever seen how a tomato grows in nature they kind of sprawl they are vines really they just kind of lay on the ground and spread out and take up so much space and their fruit is all over the ground so just by seeing the way a tomato plant grows in nature, that lets you know so many of the reasons why vertical gardening is a great idea. The first and probably the most obvious reason why vertical gardening is a great idea, especially in a smaller garden like mine, is that it saves you so much space. I'm going to show you guys, I have a pot on my deck of three cherry tomato plants that are not staked or trellised in any way. They're just kind of sprawling everywhere. I'm going to show you what that looks like and how much space that takes up as opposed to these tomatoes here. So in this little bed behind me, I have nine tomato plants and they're taking up so much less space. And you can see, I have the whole ground here free. Now, in this case, I've just chosen to mulch the ground, but I could also put some companion plants here if I wanted to. But you can see these tomato plants are upright. They have a really small footprint. Now these, of course, are determinate tomatoes, which will have a fairly small footprint anyway. But if I were to allow these to sprawl, I would most likely not be able to get nine tomato plants in this small little space here. Now here's another example. These are indeterminate tomato plants and these are huge plants. You can see how high up they go. These are probably about seven feet tall. And if I were to just have these laying on the ground, they would be taking up this entire bed here, spilling into the walkway and into so the So by growing those tomato plants vertically, I'm able to save so much space. Now the same would apply to plants like cucumbers or other plants that are, tend to be vines that just take up a lot of space. You can save a lot of space by growing them vertically. The next reason for growing plants vertically is that it reduces disease. It creates better airflow by having the plant elevated rather than along the ground. A lot of diseases are transmitted through the soil, especially when it comes to plants like tomatoes that are very disease prone anyway. When they're laying up along the soil, what happens is their leaves are on the ground, they stay wet longer, there's not as much airflow, the plant kind of tangles up in itself, and it's just a breeding ground for disease. Now that does not mean that you can't be successful growing your plants along the ground, but you have a better chance of success, or at least keeping your plants healthy longer if you trellis them somehow, grow them upright somehow. Now you probably saw when I showed you my trellis tomatoes, they do have disease, and in my area, tomatoes pretty much it's inevitable that they will get disease at some point in the season but by growing them upright I'm able to control the spread of that disease to some extent. I'm able to delay the onset of that disease and I'm able to keep my plant as healthy as I possibly can with my growing conditions. Now kind of going along with that if your plant especially a fruiting plant of some type is growing along the ground the fruits are going to be laying along the ground as well. It makes them vulnerable to rot because they're going to be laying on the wet ground. It also makes them more easily eaten by predators. Things like bugs, slugs, rodents. Creatures like that will be able to reach your fruit if they're on the ground. Last year, this is from last year, this is before I started making videos so I don't have any footage to show you, but I tried out a new staking method with some of my tomato plants that did not work. And I had tomato plants kind of crawling around the ground. I had one tomato plant in particular that was not really well supported by the staking system and kind of draped all along the ground. And I got very few fruits from that plant. That plant actually produced very many fruits, but because they were on the ground, a lot of them rotted. Many of them were eaten by bugs. They just had bites out of them. They were not appetizing at all. And so despite the fact that my plant produced so many fruits, I was only able to harvest a couple from that plant. 
So vertical gardening will kind of prevent that from happening by raising your fruits upright where it's harder for ground dwelling creatures like slugs and voles and creatures like that to really get a hold of your fruit. Vertical gardening makes harvesting easier. Now, if you've ever grown, say, pole beans and bush beans, there's advantages to both of them. I grow both of them. They're both great plants. But one big advantage of pole beans is that when they're trellised and they grow upright, harvesting is so much easier. It's so much easier to find the fruits. It's so much easier to pick them. You can, when it comes to pole beans, you can just stand up and harvest. And the same is true of many other plants that you would trellis. So especially if you have any kind of health condition, back problems, knee problems, anything like that, that makes it harder for you to harvest something that's low to the ground, growing upright plants is a great solution. So the next thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to vertical gardening is how do you do it? Now there are so many options available and which one you choose kind of depends partly on what plant you're growing or you could be like me and try a little bit of everything and see what works. You can see behind me, I have these tomatoes growing on stakes. Now these are determinate tomatoes, which means they're not going to get that tall. They might get three or four feet tall, but they're not going to get like seven or eight feet tall like my indeterminate tomatoes. And so for these, a simple stake works. Now you can stake indeterminate tomatoes as well. You're just going to need a sturdier stake and it's going to need to be a longer stake. So this is a great option for keeping a lot of tomatoes in a pretty small space. Now, one thing to know is that if you're growing a plant that is not a natural climber, like a tomato plant, you're going to need to tie it to the stake. I think you saw on my stakes here that the tomato plants are tied on with tomato tape. That just keeps them attached to the stake and will keep them growing upright. Now, another option when it comes to tomatoes, which a lot of people use, this is not my favorite option, but it is an easy and fairly affordable option, is the tomato cage. Now, I do use a few tomato cages. I mostly prefer them for determinate tomatoes like these or for cherry tomatoes. For the tomatoes that have large fruits and get very tall, I prefer other options, which we'll get to in a minute. But the tomato cage is a great option if you're just starting out and you want something easy that you just stick on your tomato plant and then it's good to go. So as I said, I find that I do use tomato cages for my cherry tomatoes and the occasional determinate tomato as well. For my indeterminate tomatoes, I prefer trellising. Now, lots of people use cattle panels, which is a great option. That is probably even better than what I do. And if you're able to get cattle panels, that is a great option. Go for it. We do not have a truck, and so it's kind of tricky for us to get cattle panels. So this year, I tested out a similar solution, which is not quite as heavy duty, but I got some welded wire fencing. Now, we just got it at Home Depot. It comes in a roll. We unrolled it and staked it. I did a whole video on that, so I'll link that below if you want to check out the installation of that fencing. And in that video, I said that I was going to let you guys know as the season goes on how I like this for my tomatoes, and I love it. It's been, it's worked so well with our tomato plants. By growing them on the trellis, it frees up the rest of the bed. We're able to grow other plants in the bed kind of in front of and behind the tomato plants, it gives us a lot more space. It keeps our tomato plants healthier. It keeps our fruit healthier, makes harvesting easier. I just, I can't say enough good things about growing them on the trellis. I really love it. And that is how I'm going to do it forever. So another option for vertical gardening is an arched trellis. Now you've seen in my garden, we have down the middle walkway of the garden, we have three cattle panel trellises, which go from, from one bed to the other bed. They go over the walkway. So basically the space that your plant is using in that case is walkway space. You have a few inches on either side of your gardening bed that you're giving up, but for the most part, that plant is using walkway space to grow. It needs a little bit of space in the garden bed for its root system, but all of its stems, foliage, fruit is over the walkway. So that is a great use of space. And besides that, it's just beautiful. I love these arch trellises. They're one of my favorite garden additions. They just make my garden feel magical when they're covered with plants and they make harvesting so easy and they take up so much less space. So highly recommend. Now those are cattle panels. I don't think you'd be able to get away with the welded wire fencing for an arch trellis like that because the cattle panels are substantially stronger. So for something that's actually going to arch over your bed and support heavy plants, you do want a cattle panel. Now another option for growing plants vertically is a fence. Now, many of us have fences around our gardens anyway. Depending on the type of fence it is, you could use that fence to do double duty and support some plants that are growing. All along the outside of my garden fence, we grow peas every year. Now, we have hardware cloth with kind of with a wooden frame and that makes a great support for peas. 
our fence is only about between three and four feet tall, so it won't work for supporting a really tall plant. But for peas, it works great. The peas go a little bit above the fence, but they get enough support. Our fence is gonna be there anyway because we need to keep critters out of our garden. And this way we're utilizing that space that's already taken up by a fence. We're utilizing it to grow food. So we grow our peas all on that fence. One thing I did for the first time this year, which I am going to do every year because I love it, is we have a chain link fence surrounding the chicken yard where our chickens hang out. And along the outside of that fence, I planted cucumbers this year. I'm so glad that I tried that out this year and I think I'm going to do that every year from now on. Now it's a chain link fence. The cucumbers have been growing up it and doing really well. So look around your property for fences that you have. Now that fence is not in my garden area. It is a bit of a risk, but I'm going to keep taking that risk every year. So look around your yard for structures that you can kind of make do double duty. So if you've got fences, plant some plants around it. If you've got trellises, if you've got just anything in, the, in your yard that you can use to support a plant, that's a great way to squeeze more food into your yard, especially when you're limited on space like I am. Now, one more option is to make a teepee. Now, this is most commonly used for pole beans. You can see that we have a few, we have a few teepees set up in our new no-dig garden bed area. We have some pole beans growing on those. That is actually how I used to grow all of my pole beans before we installed the arch trellises. And they work great for pole beans, so that's a great option as well. Now, the next thing I want to talk about when it comes to vertical gardening is what kind of plants are great candidates to be used for vertical gardening. We've already talked about some of them already. We've talked about tomatoes. You've seen my tomatoes that are staked here. You've seen my tomatoes growing on my trellis wall. And you've seen my tomatoes that are growing in cages. So tomatoes are a plant that I highly recommend growing vertically. A lot of those advantages that we talked about, about saving space, about preventing disease, easier harvesting, those really apply to tomatoes. So tomatoes are a perfect candidate for vertical gardening. Now, as I touched on a little bit before, tomatoes are not natural climbers. So you're going to have to, depending on what kind of support you give them, you're going to have to either weave them through a wall or you're going to have to tie them to a stake. If you grow them in a tomato cage, they just kind of drape around it. You don't really need to do anything else there. But you're going to have to find some way to get your tomato plant trained to that support. Now, some other options that are great for vertical gardening are cucumbers. Cucumbers are natural climbers. They'll put out tendrils. So all you really have to do is show it where it needs to go maybe weave it in through a little bit of your wall or your trellis a little bit, and it's going to do the rest. They'll climb right up and it'll save so much space versus having your cucumber crawling on the ground. You'll be able to find any pests that are eating your cucumber much more easily, and pests will have a harder time finding the cucumbers themselves. It'll keep your plants healthier. It's just a great option. Another type of plant that's great to grow vertically are peas. I mentioned before that we have peas growing on our garden fence. We do that every single year, and peas are also natural climbers. You can see that they put out little tendrils to kind of grab onto the fence. Now, if you don't have a fence to grow your peas, you could put up a trellis wall similar to what I have for my tomatoes. They would do well on that too. Um, when I first started my garden, I just put up a little length of chicken wire down the middle of one of my garden beds and the peas grew on that. That worked great too. So that's another cheap and easy alternative to grow peas on. Another type of plant that is really great to grow vertically are pole beans. Now, pole beans and bush beans are different types of beans. Bush beans, bush beans won't get as tall. They don't usually need support. Although if you've seen some of my garden tours this year, you know I had some bush beans that kind of went rogue and started climbing everything they could find. So there are exceptions. But for the most part, bush beans aren't really going to need to climb and won't need to be supported. Pole beans, on the other hand, definitely need support. Pole beans are natural climbers. Now they don't put out tendrils the way peas or cucumbers do. What they'll do is they'll just take their stem and they'll wrap around whatever it is that they're trying to climb. So we usually grow our pole beans on the arch trellises down the middle walkway of our garden bed. As I showed you before, we are growing some on some pole bean teepees as well. Either of those are great options that are pretty space efficient, fairly inexpensive and easy. And they all will make harvesting so much easier. Now, another option that a lot of people like to grow vertically is winter squash. I've never actually experimented with growing winter squash vertically. I don't grow a lot of winter squash. This is actually the first year that I'm really playing around with growing any, but winter squash is a plant that takes up a lot of space. And so it is a great plant to grow vertically. Now, one thing you're going to have to keep in mind if you're growing something like a winter squash that has a big heavy fruit vertically is you're going to need to provide support to each individual fruit. 
If you're growing on a trellis and the big heavy fruits are going to hang down, you're going to need to support the individual fruits. You're going to have to tie them to the trellis somehow. A lot of people use pantyhose. You can get actual like melon or squash slings that you can buy or you could make something yourself. I've seen all kinds of creative ways that people come up with to just support those individual fruits on the trellis. But if you don't support the individual fruit, a couple things could happen. One is that the actual weight of the fruit itself could become too heavy for the plant to support and it could end up ripping off and damaging part of your plant. We obviously want to avoid that. Another thing that could happen is the fruit could fall from the plant itself and if the fruit falls a great distance, it's going to end up potentially getting damaged. It could get cracked. It could get, and then you're going to get insects and other creatures into that crack and basically spoiling your fruit. So you want to prevent that. Similarly, some people grow watermelons on a trellis. I think that people usually grow the smaller personal size melons on a trellis. I'm not sure how well it would work to grow a giant watermelon on a trellis, but if you try that, let me know because I am curious about that. But similarly, watermelons, you'll need to support the individual fruit as well. Now we are growing personal size cantaloupes on a trellis and it's the same kind of thing. We actually have not been incredibly successful with growing cantaloupes in our area, but we're giving it a try. And when we get the individual fruits, those are pretty small because they're personal sized. Once they get close to ripening, we have to support the individual fruit on the trellis because what will happen with a melon, when the fruit is ripe, the plant will release it and then it's going to fall and most likely crack. So we ended up losing some fruit last year to a groundhog, which fell and the groundhog just made off with it. So you want to avoid that happening. And so you want to support the individual fruit. So I hope that this has inspired you to try vertical gardening. It's really not that hard. Sometimes it can be a little bit of work getting these systems set up, but once they're in place, maintaining them is really so easy and is actually going to make your gardening season easier and give you less gardening work, less gardening maintenance work. And that is a great thing. So let me know if you have any other vertical gardening tips that I missed, let me know in the comments because I would love to learn new tips and I'm sure everyone else reading the comments would love to learn new tips as well. Let me know your favorite plants to grow vertically. If you've tried growing plants vertically that I have not mentioned, let me know. Let me know how they did. Let me know what you recommend. I'm always open to experimenting and if you guys give me some new ideas for experimenting, I would love to try them out. So I hope that you are having a great gardening year. I hope that you are inspired to try vertical gardening if you haven't tried it already. I hope that you found some new techniques that you're interested to try. All right, I hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye, see you next time.